Please welcome Nicole Lappin. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. You stress the importance of financial independence for women. And why is that personal for you? So I didn't come from money, as you know. I grew up in an immigrant family. I started as a poetry major, Drew. So if I could do this, literally anyone can do this. And so I realized that it's actually not that complicated and it became my mission to take the jargon out of this because I think that's what makes it so scary and so taboo. Do you have to realize that money is a language just like anything else? If you go to Japan and you don't speak Japanese, you'd be really confused. But then if you speak the language, you can understand it and join the conversation. The same thing with money. If you go to Wall Street and you don't speak the language of money, you'll be really confused. But here's the thing, you can't budget your way into wealth. You can't even save your way to wealth. Those are great things. Your base salary is not even going to grow you long-term wealth. The only thing that will is investing and utilizing that amazing force of compound interest that has so often been used against us in the financial system with credit cards and mortgages where it snowballs out of control. Well, you can take that control back and use it in your favor. Well, what is the first step? Start now. You don't need a lot of money to make a lot of money. If you tell yourself that, those are just stories you're telling yourself. You need the most time possible. Einstein calls this the eighth wonder of the world, where compound interest, your money literally makes money for you, not doing anything. You don't need to look at stock charts all day. You just have to set it and forget it. And honestly, today is as good a day as any. You're never as young as you are today. Actually, that's an important point, is age. Age matters. It absolutely matters. I'm glad I didn't invest earlier, said no one ever. <laughs> All right, well, we actually had some audience questions. Our first question comes from Diamond, by the way, best name ever. <laughs> Hi, Drew and Nicole. I'm a mom of two little ones, ages three and 10 months. How do I get them to become financially literate grownups? Okay, that's a little young. <laughs> um, however, when you hear a question like that, what goes through your mind and what's your advice? The reality is our kids are not learning this stuff in school. If I were in charge of the world, it would be different. So it's incumbent on us as parents to help our kids become financially literate. And you can implement little concepts, like if your kids wanna borrow money for you for a bit, from you for a big purchase, you can charge them interest if they pay late. You can have an allowance go on a sliding scale or have them negotiate for an allowance or even ask them how much a car costs. This is a fascinating conversation with a kid, by the way, to give them a concept of how much things cost. But here's the reality, Diamond, wherever you are, it doesn't matter if you are not financially in control. Your kiddos are watching you. A lot of our financial habits and mores happen from our parents, whether they spent frivolously, they were out of control, they hoarded, they coupon clipped, they got into debt. So your kids are watching you. You have to put your oxygen mask on first, even before helping your kiddos, because they're copying every financial move you make. Our next question comes from Brittany in our audience. Uh, Brittany? So my question is, as someone who's in the last year of their 20s, what should I be doing to be financially successful in my 30s? You have the luxury of time. You don't need a lot of money to start if you have that much time. So for easy math, let's say you put 100 bucks into an index fund that tracks the market. If you started at 25, by the time you're 65, you'd have a million bucks. Oh, wow. If you start at 35, and that's only $12,000 of a difference, right? 100 bucks a month times 12 months a year times 10, mm -hmm. you would have $300,000 when you're wow. 65. That's a $700,000 difference just based on compound interest. So start today. I definitely will, thank you. Okay, the, I've never heard anything like that. So you take $100 a month if you have yeah. the privilege of that yes. kind of money and you invest it in an S&P 500, for most of your life, by the end, there will be something there for you. Yes. And oh. with each year and each decade, that will decrease. Over time, we want to beat inflation, right? We've been hearing all these headlines about inflation, which is about 3%. So you at least need to inflation-proof your money. What are you getting in a bank account right now or a checking account? That's what a lot of women put their money less than a percent. If inflation's at 3%, you're losing 2% of your purchasing power. So inflation is just stuff costing more tomorrow than it did yesterday. So when little Drew was going to a movie, how much did it cost? 
$2.50. How <laughs> much does it cost today? It's about $17 a person at this point. And then that doesn't even count for the candy counter. Right. And if you transport little Drew with her $2.50, she's not getting into a movie. And that's why you have to make your money work for you. You work so hard for your money. It's time it returned the favor. So over time, the market or the S&P 500, which tracks the market, gets you about 7% inflation adjusted. Your book is just... So incredible because numbers can be overwhelming. Finances can be so stressful. But you talk about the human experience as well as give such sound financial advice. So you're who I want to be following. And nothing makes me happier than seeing people succeed. So guess what? Everyone in the audience is going home with a copy of Nicole's book. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Miss Thank Independent, you. a simple 12-step plan to start investing and grow your own wealth is available right now. Now we all have it, and you can too. Go buy it. We'll be right back. <laughs>